so much to talk about. It's all about drawing today, how I draw. Um, you may have seen a short recently of me uh, showing my portfolio, my classical drawing portfolio, and that's what we're going to be looking at in more detail today. Um, I'm also going to show you how I do that process, simplified, and how I draw even just casually. Um, so all of that, plus we're going to be talking about where I am in my sketchbook challenge, of course. Uh, I am now in my last 20 days. But to be honest with you, it's been a bit of a challenge. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why I was doing great. And then all of a sudden, I kind of hit a wall. And um, it became more of a struggle this past week. And you get to see that. Because <laughs> I had a, a, at least one big failure. One big thing that just kind of went south on me. And I just accepted it. <laughs> It's like the muse was pushing back, telling me you're doing too much, you need to calm down, don't get too cocky here. And uh, anyways, yeah, I got corrected and it's fine. Um, but this kind of leads into a comment that I got. I had someone ask me, are you ever afraid of messing up your sketchbook page? And yes, yes, we all have that, uh, that fear. We have the fear of a blank canvas, a blank piece of paper and especially if you've bought something expensive expensive canvas expensive sketchbook I think it gets even more and more intimidating when you first start but one thing you have to do I think is just draw a lot that's first of all and then there's a couple of tips I have for you to get around that fear especially if it's a brand new sketchbook and I made a video about this where you could actually flip to the back of the sketchbook you can do a quick painting or a study of something really quickly or just do a sphere or lines testing, whatever you like. And that kind of gets you past your initial fear. And um, it also gives you an opportunity to feel what the paper feels like in that sketchbook before you commit to something that's a little bit more prominent. Or another thing you can do is switch to the front of the sketchbook and do swatching at the very front of the sketchbook. You may not want to do too much playing there unless you're just that comfortable with it, but a swatch, nice beautiful colors of some of your favorite colors that you like to use, and just use those first few pages for that. And so that also gives you an opportunity to get past that initial fear and jump into it. Another thing that I do, if I really, really hate something that I've done in my sketchbook, if I have something else that I've done on a free piece of paper, I will paste it in with some type of uh, archival glue and paste it right over the image and then have something that I like on that page and my mess up's covered up. Or you can just accept it and use it as an opportunity to learn and grow from and see that yes, Things aren't always great or you don't feel good you don't you're not in the mood to draw sometimes that certainly happens to me I know some days I just cannot draw and so that's something I often will do and if you don't have something of course you can just draw some stuff paint some stuff or whatever on a separate piece of paper until you have something that you like and reserve that page until you have it and then paste it in so there's many options to get past that fear but I completely, completely understand that so well. But there is so much to talk about today, so I don't want to waste any more time uh, here chit-chatting, rambling on like I normally do. Let's go ahead and get started. So you saw this one before. I know you've seen it a few times. Um, I put it in some of my videos, unless it's your very first video that you've watched. This was a model that um, that I have, and I sketched her out. And this is called the site size method. So from the photograph that I had of her, I placed it next to it, and I measured it so everything was as exact as possible to hopefully get her likeness as good as possible. And then I went back and I touched up um, using a little bit of gouache some highlights and stuff and popped it into her eyes to just make the whole drawing pop a little bit more. So, 
This was another drawing I had done of someone that I know that um, I really loved her hair and her bun. And she's, um, she's Indian, so she has a lovely features. Very elegant lady. And um, I just really wanted to make sure I got all the shadings and her and her darker skin tones and um, the value as as her face turned away from the light the window was behind her um, that's why it kind of looks like it's lighter on this side moving into a darker range and I feel like I got uh, a really lovely interpretation of her this is also another study I did of my model and um, let me see if I can maybe zoom this out just a little bit. It's maybe about the 11 by 17 range. So I'll bring it in so maybe you can see some of the details. Trying to work out all those values on her back. And then actually this background here was just a, a made up scene of Florida with palm trees and that sort of thing. I'm sorry if I'm kind of wobbling this around because I want to be able to pick it up and show you everything. And the background, I just did like a light line so it kind of has a texture to it, if you can see that. And so this is a larger portrait I did. Now, just to make sure that I am being transparent and honest. So, I studied with Stephen Bauman for a while online. And I've talked about Stephen Bauman before. He used to be instructor for like 15 years at the Florence Academy of Art. And he's an excellent instructor and an amazing teacher. And he shares a lot online and on Patreon. If you want to learn how to draw, I would recommend him higher than many people. And uh, he's very giving about all, all the information that he shares. But when I was studying with him, I was doing a one-on-one -on -one classes for a while. And this was actually one of the reference photos that he gave me to try to work on my value range. Um, so that's what I did. I, I worked on the photograph for quite a while. And usually these kinds of drawings do take multiple days. These are not quick types of drawings that you do. They're, and they're not supposed to be high realism. They're just to be, they're just supposed to be more accurate. And working out the values and as a tool to learn values and how to continue to grow and your ability to see. But I I really liked that image a lot. I enjoyed painting him. So this this is actually a portion of this statue that's in the Met. And I, I saw this in the Met a few years ago before in 2019 I went I actually took uh, a workshop with Juliet Aristides, and I've talked about her books before and in New York. I got really fortunate, and I jumped on it. <laughs> and while I was there, I was able to see uh, this statue. But I, I really loved this particular area of the statue. This is a statue, by the way. This is marble that someone took the time to carve. And my values aren't probably as dark as they could possibly be. But the thing about values is when you're working on so many variations of values, it you 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 have everything's equal. Everything's relative to itself. So if you darken one area, everything else needs to go along with it uh, so the range is is correct. And I worked on this for again many many weeks and um, looking again for that uh, site size for proportion trying to make sure that I was drawing exactly what I was seeing and uh, that's as far as I got it. This is just a little leaf on some vellum. I'm not going to take it out. So 
this. This is William Bouguereau. It's a really famous, famous painting. He did a lot of really popular large paintings and um, a lot of artists really love his work because it's very fine. It's very uh, classical in its style and I can't say that I am like he is my favorite artist. He's It's beautiful. His work is beautiful. It's probably not as impressionistic as I tend to like um, but this is one of the paintings that he did that I like the most. I really loved uh, her features and this little bonnet. It's a larger painting. This this image is much, much huger. Um, but I just focused on her face. And, and I did this as a study towards doing a master painting, which technically I never completed. But I did complete the drawing and I really liked it. So I'm going to show you the painting really quick, but it's it's not complete. So this is the master copy that I started um, in oil and I used my drawing. I actually copied this, traced my image, my master drawing, and um, I traced it onto my canvas board. This is a canvas, like a fine, uh, fine canvas on top of a birch board. And, um, and I got pretty far along, but I started getting frustrated with some of it, and then I lost interest, and I lost steam, and I never went back to finish her. So, that's, uh, that's why that's where it's at. I actually have the drawing of this. So, this is the original painting copy that I've been working with and this is what I did my drawing from as well so it started off there I chose a size so that I could do sight size drawing and then I started trying to duplicate it but I still have far to go but that was uh, that was that process of trying to do a master copy but I really loved the drawing the most that, that was my favorite thing I felt like I captured it the most so that was that process. Then when I went to um, I went to Chad's Ford, Pennsylvania, to go to the Brandywine Museum, which is the museum that houses a great deal of the uh, work of Andrew Wyeth and um, his father N. C. Wyeth, who was a famous illustrator. If you've probably see me illustrating some of his stuff in my sketchbook. And then Andrew Wyeth had a son named Jamie who's also an artist and he's still alive today. But um, So I got a chance to go to the Kuhner Farm which was one of the major places where Andrew Wyeth painted and drew for a long period of time. And I got to tour it. And when I was up walking around through the house I saw this little cup. And so I took a photograph of it because I thought it looked very intimate and this was the larger window with that cup and this window overlooked the front yard of the Kerner farm and this hill back here which I know it's very light because um, it was really hard being inside a dark room and then I'm actually just working on this from a photograph trying to capture this this hill back here and I think it's slightly lightened over time but um, because maybe just moving it around and stuff, the graphite might have been shifting or something. But Andrew Wyeth, he lived across this hill and he would walk across this hill to come to this farm and walk down the drive past the gates and stuff. And he painted all over this farm. And of course, Andrew Wyeth is a major influencer um, on my artistic creative life. Um, I love his draftsmanship because I'm highly drawn to drawing and being a good draftsman. And so that's something that I did from that trip. So this is just another quick image I did of my model. Um, again, working on values. 
Not my favorite thing, but uh, I think I like it all in all. Another image I did of my friend. Um, and I like the... I like the overall composition of this particular drawing, but sometimes I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it still. And again, it's okay. It's okay to be your own critic. This is what pushes you forward to keep working on your skills. And this is just a small study I did of my model. And um, it's something that I keep thinking I'm going to go back to because I just thought it was lovely her her back with this robe on it and uh, the lease in her hair so in the comments um, I got some requests to look at my birds it was also in this portfolio when they saw it in the short and uh, these are the birds here they're just little studies they're more on the illustrative side I think possibly um, but what I did was I used graphite. I came back with a little bit of white charcoal and then a little bit of gouache to get some of the brighter whites that I wanted in here and in his eye so it glinted. That's a tufted titmouse, by the way. And this is a little oven bird that I did. I did the same process, again, using the white charcoal and... Um, uh, some a slight little bit of gouache and this guy is a brown thrasher and again I did the same process but this one probably looks the most illustrative in its style and it may be because I added this extra ring of white which I think I would have preferred it had I not done that particular step so to talk about the basics I thought I would use Juliet Aristides book on classical drawing. I introduced this book before um, when I was talking about different books that would be helpful. So this is where we begin. With any drawing, you can always identify the major lines as one of your first things that you can do. And you can also identify the boundaries of the drawing itself. So this is called a notional space box. And you just do a basic square. And then you identify the plumb lines, which is the vertical. And then you define a horizontal. It does not have to be exact. As you can see, even this notional space box is not perfect but I find it does help if it is a little bit more accurate myself. And then, so, and this is obviously the drawing as it progressed. It's not showing you the reference picture, but it shows you how it was constructed. This was the starting point with making that notional space box, identifying the major lines, the very, very major lines that this shape lives within and this is called the envelope. So it envelops the total image, identifying major lines. Even if those lines slightly deviate, you can measure the distance, how far the lines deviate. So this is the sight size method specifically so that you're learning to teach your eyes how to draw and how to recognize spatial relationships. And you don't always do this unless you're doing something really, really specific and accurately drawn. But as you move forward and as you progress, you get better at doing this on the fly without doing all these um, extra steps. And then that line was used right there. And then everything is used to measure, whether it be the distance from here to here, from your the bottom of your notional space box to a point where this line intersects, which is just above the horizontal line. And, um, and then all the additional lines are kind of measured off of that. 
And if you see here, this is where he was actually, there's so many different lines being crossed and gone through as he's fine tuning the distances of everything through little measurements. And then it gets erased back and then you get the final overall outline before you start working on the shading. That's the next step. So for the sake of the video not being too long, I just want to show you really quickly. This is my eye study from the Charles Barg drawing plates. So here's an example of one of those eyes that I did earlier. And I don't know if you can see the eye. The eye is actually the darkened spot here. Again, creating a notional space box and then just defining the major lines, I used this line. I created a line through here, this line, and then measuring. Using those lines, the reference lines you use that will initially get pushed back to measure how far your line should be when you are on the drawn page that you're working on. So I hope that makes sense. It can be a little confusing, a little intimidating at first until you get used to it. You could probably easily find the Charles Barg eyes plate if you just Google it. This is that same method actually shown in the Charles Barg plate, which I did this split as well. You can see where they created a plumb line. For some reason, they decided the plumb line should be here, being maybe the highest point uh, in the actual image itself, and then creating the major lines. See how curved this is here? But as a general reference, they just drew a straight line through it. And then once you have your straight line, you can identify how far the distance is that all these slight adjustments away from that reference line actually are. Just like right here. Here's a longer reference line. This indentation of the heel is a certain distance away from that line. This part touches the line, this part moves away slightly, and then where it starts to curve, you can identify that as well. Just by simple measurement of your line when you're drawing it, you just measure it, and then, I, then identify it on the drawing that you're doing yourself, then working all the way down to the point where you're actually working on the shading and the values in this final foot. So he tells you the steps. And so if you happen to have a bard plate, the one thing I would tell you as a tip is please make sure that if you start measuring, measure off of the final image, not the initial image, because sometimes these things, these things are hand drawn initially and they're small variations. So if you are relying on this as your final thing that you're trying to see, make your initial line work off of the final drawing in the plate. And so that's my tip. Um, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> okay, so this week's sketchbook. So you probably remember last week we did this pair. And the day that I edited and published, I also did another Joke Freema page. That was, that was this artist as well. And um, this was just um, a squash flower that she had, but I did it very quick and loose, mostly focusing on the flower because I really didn't have a whole lot of time and I didn't want to commit too much of it to doing the details of the background and the leaves. So that was fine. And then well, I had this, I did this radish. Um, it's not much. My friends give me a hard time about this radish because uh, she could tell, I think that I was getting tired by this point. <laughs> and, uh, but it's okay. It's all right. I'll hide this for a second because I actually did this second or after that. Um, so this is a study of um, one of NCYS paintings that I did. I've always loved this tree in this painting, and I'm going to show you that reference in just a second. But uh, I chose to do a two-page spread, and I ended up, I don't know how much you feel about it, but I really love it. I love the vibe. This 
cool woods covered in snow and all the purple background and the indication of trees in the forest and just how it becomes kind of smoky and ghost-like with the presence of the snow. And so I was very happy with it. And there's a few scatterings of uh, leftover autumn leaves still hanging out on this tree. This is probably like first snow. I'm not sure, but that's my thought. And let me show you the reference really quick. So this is the reference image I used. Um, I did take a little bit of liberty to um, exaggerate the details a bit of the tree. For example, because I wanted this to go on to this other page, this limb before this curve hits on the tree is slightly exaggerated beyond the point that uh, he has it at. And I didn't want to do all the details of the men in here because that's not what interests me about this painting, even though it's clearly his focus, but the, the darkness and the action that's going on. This was um, an illustration he did for a book. So, um, but these trees back here, that tree has always struck me. I've always, I love trees anyways, to be honest with you. And I did try to do this tree before in a painting and it didn't go well. I mean, I think I was newer to painting maybe when I tried that. And um, cause technically I've only been painting with oils, for example, not in watercolors. Just I've always done um, watercolors and uh, a little bit of acrylic, but not very much. I ne never felt very confident with paints until I was about 35 to be honest with you and that's when uh, I went to a major exhibit for Tom Thompson in Canada I've mentioned him before and when I saw his paintings I decided to get over my fear of painting I've always drawn and uh, started painting so it's only since I was 35 that I've been technically painting painting like especially in oils and so I had tried to do this tree and I did not like it but this little version I did in uh, watercolor and acrylic quickly in my sketchbook for that day's challenge. I really, I'm really very pleased with it in case you can't tell. <laughs> I, I really love the vibe of this particular page. So anyways, that was that. He's such an amazing illustrator. I'll let you see this up close. I mean, look at that tree. That is, that tree is just gorgeous. <laughs> and see the autumn leaves? It's not exactly, I didn't place them exactly the same place. I just wanted to get the general vibe of that tree very quickly. So that's what I did that day. However, the next day, well, you know, I've been doing lots of fruit. I've been doing fruits off and on ever since I started. Fruits and vegetables, let's just say. So I was feeling pretty confident. And and I, I don't know what happened. I was tired, and so I got a yellow apple out of the fridge. I thought, oh, this will be good. This will be nice. I'm a little tired. Let me get this apple. And it flopped. This isn't even what it looked like. It was so bad. I don't know why, why it just did not work out. After I struggled with it and was getting really frustrated, I decided to quit. But then I just took some white gouache and went over it. I mean, maybe I'll go back later on and try it again, but I was so upset. And so, well, that apple, it's gone. I ate it right after, I was so upset. <laughs> And then the next day, well, I went back into some vegetables again, and I did these vine tomatoes from the store that I got. I think they turned out fairly good. I got even the reflection of the white paper that I had put underneath it, reflecting back up onto the edge of the tomato like it was. You see a little bit right there too. 
And then I decided to try to do a drawing. So this was my attempt to draw one of Andrew Wyeth's versions of Helga in pencil. And I'll show you that now too. Tomshimanyo. So that was the original. And uh, it's really beautiful. My copy did not turn out as good of that, even though I did try sight size. I tried to put it next to it to draw it. And it's slightly off, I feel. And then for my final day, which was last night, I just did this really quick basic landscape. Something I found, I think, on the internet or something. Um, I kind of like the idea of walking into this pasture. Um, I did overplay with this field here and then had to go back in with gouache. I even published it on Instagram before I messed it up and it looks slightly different, so, but it's fine. Um, I like the idea of this entering into a, a new, a new beginning or new place or just the focus of walking past that gate, so. And of course the tree is lovely. Um, but it was pretty quick. So that's all they did in sketchbook this week. Okay, everyone, I guess that wraps up this week's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and you found some helpful, inspiring information. Next week, we will be doing more uh, information on drawing. I'll be sharing my materials, and if you're curious about my hand sharpening of my pencils that you saw at the very beginning of the video, I'll be sharing that um, with some of my other materials and my paper that I typically use for classical drawing. And of course, more sketchbook stuff will be coming, and uh, that will be about it. So I hope that you all have a beautiful, blessed, a very creative week ahead, and I'll see you next week. Bye! Annyeong! Bye!